Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is episode two of my Etsy archaeology series, the series where I scour Etsy for printables that we can use in our junk journals. Um, I do check with all of these shops to make sure it is okay to sell your journals um, if you use the items. Um, of course, you can't sell you know, the printed out file and you can't use them to sell um, digitally. But I have another shop to share with you today. I am so happy I found this shop. She has the most amazing printables. It's Seneca Pond Crafts. The link is below. Please check out her shop. Um, I contacted her and offered to pay for um, a couple of the items so that I could share them with you and feature her. And she was so kind and um, said that she would be more than happy to provide me with the items um, now and in the future. So you will be seeing more from her shop because I'm so impressed and there's some projects that I'm going to want to do with um, her items and this is not a tutorial this is just kind of sharing her shop. Eileen is the lovely lady who owns this Etsy shop and um, she provided me with a lot of information about um, her items and herself and she has a website as well which I will also link below. It's called SenecaPondCrafts.com and she told me that um, there's so much more that she offers on that website. She has over 3,000 uh, projects on there that have been curated by her. Um, lots of ideas on her Etsy. She keeps about 200 different uh, files ready for purchase and they kind of rotate out on a seasonal basis. So you're always going to find something amazing for your paper crafting. She has a monthly newsletter that you can sign up for on her um, website so you can get really involved, which is awesome. She got the love of crafting from her mother and her grandmother and to me that is the, the neatest thing. She said her grandmother made rag rugs. Her mother would always save the buttons and things like that off of um, fabrics and clothes and things like that. She would save the trims and the buttons for crafting and so she's passed it down um, to Eileen and Eileen is now sharing the love of crafting with all of us. And so I want to thank you, Eileen, for partnering with me and my channel. I'm so happy that I found you and I can't wait to work with you in 2018 with all sorts of paper crafting um, ideas that I have in my head. So she was very kind to um, send me a few different files to share with you. She said I could pick out what I wanted. And so I picked what I thought you guys would love because I love it. So let's start out with these bingo cards. How adorable are these? We all love bingo cards for our journals. And these are like the ATC um, card size. So you get nine to a page, which is really great. And I pretty much made instant ephemera here. I printed on 110 pound ivory cream cardstock. I love this for instant ephemera. All you have to do is cut it out and ink the edges and you're done. Now, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you've seen where I have glued, you know, I've printed on copy paper and then I've glued it onto coffee dyed paper and I've sewn around it. That is an amazing way to do it and I do that all the time. But sometimes it's nice to have instant, this is really nice, heavy quality. So I printed it out on this, the ivory also gives you or cream I don't know what color this is guys it's like an, uh, a cream ivory color it gives you an instant uh, aged or vintage look you don't have the stark white um, so there's nothing you really have to do it leaves lots of journaling space on the back so on these we have the all sorts of colors yet they all coordinate and they say dreams smile relax love bingo dream smile learn and bingo look at the adorable vintage um, children and then the details all sorts of extra details and collaging there's so much to look at instant ephemera for your journals so I'm so excited to be using these because I feel like they can go with so many different kinds you can put them in nature journals you can put them in um, you know we we like to do journals with vintage photographs um, um, that would be great. Also inspirational. These would be amazing on the front of greeting cards for like birthdays, um, things like that as well. They're, they would make great tuck spots because if you cut it out and you glue these two sides and leave this corner up, I'll have to, to do that in a video, um, you can slip in you know, tuck things in. So this is amazing. I love it. Now 
it gets better. Look at these mason jar tags. Um, she did an incredible job. It's something I'm really impressed with with her work is the layering and yet how gorgeous it is, the, the colors, because um, she's layered so many different elements and yet it looks so effortless. These are quite large, which I love. There's four to a page, um, so they're kind of like a postcard size. Um, again, I printed it on that heavy 110-pound um, ivory cardstock. So we have instant ephemera. Um, you can cut it out by hand, or if you have a brother scan and cut, it will, which I'm going to try, um, it will cut them right out for you so you don't have to deal with cutting around um, the tops and things like that. So how adorable is that? I also think, and, and I'll have to do a video on this, I just had a thought, but what if we cut it out and then we cut the top off we made this into like a pocket and then the, the top kind of opened up and you tuck stuff inside the jar does that make sense I am so doing a video on that guys this <laughs> I'm so doing a video on that it just yeah that would be a wonderful idea so I think I'll film that when I'm done with this video and see how that turns out then I have some she has papers eight and a half by eleven size papers so many of the digital papers that I find on Etsy are 12 by 12s because they're for digital scrapbooking but I love when I can find them in the eight and a half by eleven size so I have two different sets of paper here I printed them on presentation paper and I did front and back to just kind of show you like what I would use them for in a journal so we have two different kinds there's these floral dictionary pages and I know it's really light and I don't know how the camera's picking it up but you can see in the background um, behind the soft pink floral and polka dots um, journalist journal journaling these are J's so that is perfect and then um, let's okay there's this one in blues Again, it's the journaling um, dictionary pages. I love those soft blues. Um, then we have this pink one. Again, journaling, but you also see journey, which is a great word. You see more of the dictionary page here. Um, purple. So you ha really can, can coordinate with any. Here you see journalism. You can coordinate with any journal. I love how this flower, you can see journalism through it. It's just so inspiring for... Um, me making books okay here's a blue a light light blue one perfect room for journaling here with just a little bit around the edges I like how each one is made differently so those are um, there's five of them in that file set the floral dictionary pages look at how pretty now on the other side I printed her coffee dyed background pages and um, I asked her for these files because I couldn't wait to share them with you because when we're making journals, a lot of times we try to stay away from the blank white space. And when we cut down the 12 by 12 um, pages, like, you know, you go to Michael's, you buy a hot buy pad, the backs are usually just blank white. And if you've seen um, my videos in the past, you've seen how I love to cut them down to an eight and a half by 11 size, put them through my printer and print something on the back. Sometimes that turns out being really busy in a journal. Um, and I don't really like coffee dyeing the 12 by 12 paper pads because I found that coffee dyeing a paper tends to make it a little heavier and that's perfect for copy paper. But when you're dealing with the heavy cardstock already, it makes it almost, uh, too heavy for me. It makes it like, it's not very bendable or moldable. So I love these backgrounds that are already pre-coffee dyed for you. And so I have printed them on the back here. So if we just trim off the white edges or sew around or ink the white edges, you have a pre-made journal page. Look at that. Look at how awesome. Okay, so let's look at these. What I love about this is we already have lined paper, but look at the variegations in the coffee. Look at the, um, the creases but yet they're not real, so it's gonna lay really flat, okay? Then, if, I mean, come on, could you read our mind any better, Eileen? This is grid paper. Coffee dyed grid paper. How awesome is that? Love it. And then we even have some like receipt ledger type coffee dyed um, ones. Here's a smaller grid. Like I said, there's eight of them. Um, here's another one. And then here's another um, different lined one. 
different kind of ledger, blank ledger one. This is so nice for journaling. And then this one's another blank kind of ledger one that has the numbers down the side, which would be great for journaling prompts and things like that. So I know I've talked a lot in this episode. There's just so much good to say about Seneca Pond Crafts. Please check out her link below and favorite her Etsy shop, even if you don't purchase right now, because um, if you're like me, you, you're you not ready to buy right now. Well, maybe you are. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I am. But you know that you're in next weekend or two weeks down the road, you're going to be starting a new journal and you're going to want you know, to purchase these or to try to remember, oh, I think I wanted something with the bingo cards or the mason jars, or I don't remember what that was. Favorite, so you can go back to your favorite shop, favorited shops, and you won't um, lose or miss anything. If you also follow her shop, you'll get the notifications on your front page so you don't lo lose or miss anything when she adds new items. So um, hopefully in the next couple days, I'll have a video up doing something with these mason jar tags because they have so sparked my creativity. So thank you again, Eileen. Thank you all of you for watching episode two of Etsy Archaeology. Episode three will be Country at Heart 2008. I'm already working on it. She provided me with um, several different files and she asked if I could make a journal with them. So I'm about halfway through with the journal. It is beautiful and um, her papers and her uh, ephemera is gorgeous. So I can't wait to share that with you, hopefully um, beginning of next week. We'll just see how it goes. So have a lovely day, everyone.